it just started happening. I said, wow. Um, so it's time for us to kind of know what this is. And all this is, all I'm doing is opening the door. Okay? This ain't going to be thorough, but it's to open the door for you to do the research on your own. Hallelujah. Because you only change by the information that you study and that you know. You don't change from the information you hear. You, under, you change from the information you understand through self-study. This is why it's important to take what we got, listen to the, 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 uh, the teachings, and then teach it to yourself through meditations. Hallelujah. Because knowledge is the seed of what? Oh, oh, somebody was listening. What's the seed of uh, territory? Battle. Somebody listening. Hallelujah. All right. They ain't got nothing to do with what I'm talking about. Insecurities, right? Raise your hand and say it's me. It's me. I'm the problem. It's my fault. It's my fault. I'm, the I'm the one that's insecure. That's insecure. I'm, the I'm the one with low self-esteem. Self and, and I'm conquering it. And it's done, and it's done today. today. All right. Hallelujah. Praise Yahushua. Oh, I didn't know what you was doing. I thought it fell. Hallelujah. So it's important. Also, go back over some of the words and stuff that you heard and gave you. Um, and put those things back into your spirit. Um, I, uh, I looked back at my notes a while back, and I was like, I don't even remember this, but um, it was written that we are ascending descendants. And I was like, wow. And that's what you want to tell yourself, you are ascending descendants, that your hood and came into your bloodline to cause you to make the bloodline to ascend. So in your descendancy, when it came to you, you got to always look at yourself. I'm the ascending descendants that are never descend, only ascending. Hallelujah. So you reverse the what? Curse. Because when it got to you in the blood, it had to go the opposite. Had to go the opposite way. You see that? That, you, that has to be a reality to you. I ain't trying to make it perfect. Hallelujah. All right. I'm just going to go over some stuff that um, I wrote down. A lot of stuff I wrote down on the way here. You will just start giving me stuff. I start looking at stuff. So now let's look at insecure. Uh, the depth, just write, write down insecure. Oh, wow. That's kind of big. That's fine. I guess you're trying to make sure everybody can see. Insecure equals not firmly fixed. Liable. Put a little coal in there. There you go. Liable to give away or to break. Not, not confident. Under it, right insecurity. And that is uncertainty or anxiety about oneself. That's recording up there. Hallelujah. All right. Um, I guess we can put that. Two, the state of being open to danger or threat.
All right, last thing, low self-esteem. When one lacks confidence about who they are and what they can do. I think that's what it says. Great print handwriting. Praise the Lucia, praise. All right, so we got this. Now, insecure, not firmly fixed, liable to give away or to give out, not confident. Insecurity, uncertainty, or anxiety about oneself, a state of being open to danger or threats. Low self-esteem when one lacks confidence about who they are or what they can do. Do we have that? That's important. Right, if y'all got that, you can erase it. <laughs> got a question? <laughs> yeah, you fired. Come on. Or take a picture. Not just remember that y'all got it written down. Yes, take a picture. All right, so this is important because we're going to hit these areas of insecurities. <laughs> we got y'all, Salva. Oh, but Salva, we got you. We're going to get one of these uh, young daughters to print y'all out a copy. Oh, 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 a super scribe back there. I can't remember that name he had for the kids, call him. Hey, man, he tough. Hallelujah. <laughs> she ought to try. All right, I want you to draw a little, a little man. Draw him in the middle. Yeah, because we're going to put some stuff around him. He can be a little stick. He ain't got to show you can draw. Okay. Uh, give him some eyes so we can see, can see a little bit. <laughs> a little hair. Give him a little hair. <laughs> oh, but yeah. All right, so listen. This man here, right? We're going to handle insecure. So it's certain things that makes him develop insecurity. As certain things that's supposed to be developed as a child, uh, you always you always continuously supposed to be ascending in your in your security, not descending and reinforcing the idea of why you're insecure. This young man right here, I want you to draw, uh, f draw family. Mm -mm, just the word family. All right, so it's things in his family that's supposed to establish his security. Family is every aspect of what he learns how to relate to people. This is where he learned right and wrong relationships and how to develop relationships. This is where he come, becomes secure in learning how to develop relationships. The first main relationship that he's developed is the relationship with his mother and his what? Father. The father being there secures the son or the daughter in their identity and who they are and their purpose. Right? That's for the mother, the mother and the father. But if the father is not there, it creates insecurities because he was never given the right security. So his idea or her idea of authority is perverted. 
So this young man will go through life not having the security of family and learning authority, learning respect, learning honor, learning empathy, all of these things that are supposed to come in that family dynamic, if he don't have that security, now it becomes insecurities. And now he develops off a deficit. Right? So just create a little hole there. Under that. A dark hole just circling. So now, if the right family dynamic is not there, it's whatever he fills that void with becomes his security, which is really insecurity. Because it's not Yahuwah's original purpose of the stability of a family dynamic. So now, whatever raises him develops who, or who she is. That develops the relationship. So if they don't have right relationship with mother and father, they will view every relationship that they have with men based off boyfriend. And they'll take the relationship of a boyfriend into a marriage. And every hurt that they got through all those father not being there and boyfriend would be the insecurities of what the husband is fighting in the, because it was never, never secure. Right? Anybody want to add anything to that? Yes, sir. One of the things you say is he fills that void. When you say fill, I don't know if that's not being clear or whatever. He, he will do it to you to fill in. Mm-hmm. But so when you don't have the word to stand on, we will do you what you are feeling. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. Right, and that feeling makes you secure. So even if that feeling, because of that deficit, is anger, that becomes your dominant security. And this is what you usually go to. If that feeling is lack of self-worth, lack of self-value, your dominant reaction would be go to fill that void. And now this daughter might find herself doing any and everything to relate to a man, to relate to a friend, whatever she fills that void with. All right, let's keep going. Hold that right there. The next thing is emotional security. Hmm? This is the, you ain't got the right security there, but that's a, that's a given. You ain't want to use the dish, right? <laughs> this is also developed through the family dynamic. But if it's not developed right, now the emotional, uh, your emotional security become unstable. Now everything that happens to you add to these emotions. Do, hold on. The place first that emotions, your emotional security is supposed to be built on, you have to have, listen to this now, you want to write this down. You want to have the right measure of understanding empathy. If you never learn empathy because of your emotions, everything would be about your emotions. And everybody else can go to Shio. Because you never learn empathy because of this dynamic or if somebody from this dynamic, if, this, if you feel this family with gang culture, then they're going to develop your emotions. And this is why if it's gang culture, there's no way that you can have empathy. So everything becomes about survival myself. You see what I'm saying? So one of the first things that you have to develop for security in your emotions is empathy thinking outside of yourself for the betterment of others rather than you. If it's not that, it's going to be a black hole there, and your whole emotion is going to only be about you, and you won't be able to cut that off because you are sear yourself in your mind. Another aspect of emotional security, not only uh, 
empathy, but having the right self-awareness. Where you know yourself enough to understand what state of mind that you're in right now. I'm aware of my feelings. I'm aware of what I do when I get like this. I'm aware of how this developed. I'm aware that I need to cast this down. If I have no self-awareness, I definitely can't see myself outside myself. And if my wife or my husband or my leader tell me about myself, it will be hard for me to receive it because I never developed self-awareness. Because everything became about who? Me. So it's nothing outside of myself. You can't tell me this. I can't see that. Why? Because I never develop emotional security when it comes to self-awareness and empathy for others. Not only self-awareness, self-regulation. Where I learn to regulate myself. And this is what I be talking about. Hey, Mo, shut up. Now, don't do that. Don't say that. It take the rule out to be coming in and regulate them emotions the right way. No, you can't. I know you feel like that, but you can't move like that. You can't say that. You can't react like that. You know what happened the last time. You know where y'all at now. You'll be in a conversation with somebody or you in your, uh, you're doing your, your, uh, your marriage check-in. And you about to say something because you feel a certain way that something was said to you. And Yahushua might be like, don't say nothing. You got to regulate that emotion. But you can't let it control you. But if you have no, nor, no emotional regulation and your, your securities is built off of how you feel, then everybody can get it. And you learn to replace emotional regulation with, I'm finna turn up in whatever way I can to get my way. Act like a fool. And a lot of times, we learn how to regulate others through our emotions be, by being emotional to get control. And we'll learn that. And we learn that from a baby. Wah! 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 <laughs> oh, this works. And then they go from a baby to a toddler. No! I ain't doing that. Johnny. <laughs> Say yes, Papa. Nobody taught you how to emotionally regulate. This is them old mothers that look at you and say, boy, you better fix your face. I don't care if you shit it up. Now smile at me. <laughs> I want to see all your teeth. <laughs> what, but, but what are you teaching them? You're teaching them how to regulate their awareness and their emotions outside their feelings. This is why my children, I made them do that. And then even with little kids, I make them do that because it teaches them how to do opposite of what they feel. And they learn. Or well, there's a consequence. Because life, life is hard, and you got to prepare them for how hard life is, man. Life ain't going to care nothing about how you feel. It'll sit there and watch you cry. And throw something at you, at you the next day. <laughs> and you'll be like, yeah, yeah. and then some. I mean, life, life, I'm telling you, life ain't easy, man. <laughs> life be life. And, all right, so we got we got self awareness. You have to teach yourself and your children how to be aware of themselves. Or what? That's why we said that emotions are a gauge. Because now I'm being aware of how I feel and how this made me feel. I got to go back and discover. But then I have to self-regulate to make sure I make the right decisions outside of myself. If I don't do that, somebody touch my insecurities, I'm going to replace it, another dark. Whatever I replace that with, fighting, choking, slamming, isolating, 
shutting down, whatever I got to do because my insecurity was touched. And this is what I replaced it with, so this is my go-to. Now, if I got you. Now, if I find out my go-to works, oh, it's on. If I find out it get people off me, oh, it's on. If I find out it get people to leave me alone, oh, it's on then. If I find out this give me attention, I'm going to come in service like. Somebody ask you, hey, hey, okay. Obviously, you want somebody to say, that's how you got to do it when it come in like that. Obviously, you want somebody to say, what's wrong? <laughs> and then, they love that attention because when they get that, nothing, I'm okay. No, and you want them to go further. Now, me, you give me that first nothing, okay, hallelujah. I'm going about my business. <laughs> and you're going to be mad. <laughs> he don't care <laughs> if I say that. <laughs> Because I know that's game and I know that's darkness. That's something you replaced and have learned that that works. Another part of emotional security, two things, is social skills. And we're going to get on that in another one. I ain't going to talk about that one because I got another point on that. Developing the right social skills. There you go. That's a better way to say it. Put emotional intelligence right there. Thank you. If you look it up, it's that all of this will fall under emotional intelligence. Right. So that means not having dumb emotions. Right. Your emotions are not stupid. Stop acting slow. They are <laughs> intelligent. They've been educated. Right? Have y'all write that on the side? Everything I said. Empathy. Yeah. For right now, so they can have that. Empathy, self-awareness. You had something? Check, check. You go ahead while she's writing that. I was going to say, um, it's, it's, it's through what you bring it up because -regulation after that. from that root of that person not having something growing up, when you said self-awareness is something Social important skills. that we're supposed to have, it made me think on the flip side, without those regulators, you get self-consumption or you get emotional consumption motivation. where – what is go whatever is going on inside of you, you can't control how it manifests or how it overtakes you right. because you lack something. Right. So I was going to say that's the benefit of us having a hundredfold family because we got somebody above us that can help us to be that regulator right. where we don't naturally have in us so we don't be self-consumed or emotionally consumed. Hallelujah. Man, that, that's it. That's it. That's why you who, like you said, gave you a hundredfold family. For them to show you and tell you, you got to believe them now. When they when they your mirror and they telling you you acting like this, uh, you got to believe that. It's the truth. Hallelujah. We are here to help you learn how to regulate yourself. Okay. Hallelujah. Social skills, we'll get on that. And motivation. All this, done, this deals with emotional intelligence, right? Because if, if there's a lack of motivation, there's always an emotional attachment to lack of motivation, right? That's when the depression, but it starts with your mental capacity. And that's the next thing we're going to. Uh, mental, uh, what I want to say. Yeah, well, we'll just do that. Um, your intellect. Oh, I just put mental intelligence. Yeah, I feel you on that. It lost me. I left you. I was trying to think about it on the way here. <laughs> there you go. Mental intelligence. If there's insecurity in the way that you think, what do I mean by that? Say it again. Right, now, right, when somebody have what we would call, and I'm going to say all of us, because oppression make a wise man go what? Amen. So we have learning disabilities. And when we have learning disabilities, it make us have low self-esteem and low self-value. And we'll lash out with fear because we will think that somebody think we stupid. So we would prove everybody, 
we are uh, 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 stand on ten toes on things that don't need to be standing on strong. Some of us won't even teach our family the word because we're insecure in our learning. We have disabilities because what? That wasn't developed properly as a child so you can be secure. Where well, you're teaching your children, and not all where they're just learning at school, but you're actually teaching them and putting them, not just letting them watch cartoons, but putting them into things that will actually develop their intellect, the ability to read, the ability to comprehend, comprehension to read something and to understand it, and being able to tell you what's in the story. A lot of us, some of us didn't regulate that the right way, and this is why we got ADHD. We can't pay attention to nothing long enough. Why the word don't sink in, because nobody ever taught us how to be still and take something in and give it back to us. That even supposed to be done even in conversation with your children. Okay, what did, wh repeat back to me what I said. How did you understand that? That need to be done with husband and wife. How did you understand what I just said before you respond? Don't give me no reaction, because you might have missed everything I said. Why? Because your mental intelligence was not developed. Therefore, now you have an insecurity, and you'll fill it with whatever you believe you need to do for people to make you think you're intelligent. So this is why some of us that came to Awakening and want to do a PowerPoint. Some of us that came to uh, the guidance of music. Some of us that did everything because we have to be intelligent in something. Some of us just went through life and never really developed that. So now we get angry when we get challenged. Some of us was all right being a man until you came here. And now you look bad. Some of your marriages were straight till you came here and seen that how bad you was doing, really. Because <laughs> now that's a standard. And he was like, man, we was all right. <laughs> And we came here, but they won't, man, they really want you to do this thing. <laughs> Go ahead. Because what it ultimately does, it makes you ineffective in communication. Come on with it. Come on, talk. Because when you, when you are devoid, when you have these deficiencies, you don't know how, without empathy, you don't know how to relate, to give, Come or on. to take yes. communication. Right. So what you'll do is you'll just cover up yeah or, shut or down. you'll shut down like some people even in school rather than get the help they'll just shut down and right. stop doing it right but because they won't face the instability that they have they won't get the help that they need they're not because they don't know how to communicate right because everything has been resonated according to only their understanding right and you'll act out hallelujah so you read the you know, yeah, I want to. No, all of us, because <laughs> what happens when your mental capacity or, or intellect or intelligence get challenged, right? And you know it wasn't developed the way it should have been developed for whatever reason. Your mom had might have had a single mom, might not have been able to be there for you to show you everything to help you develop in all of these areas. Now you go to school, and they don't care about you at school, and them kids will eat you alive. And when they eating you alive, it's making you develop an insecurity. So now you got to come up with a defense mechanism to stand on that defense. And whatever that defense is, it get reinforced as you grow older. You see what I'm saying? And this is why you might not know how to communicate your thoughts. Because I haven't had the right mental intelligence even when it comes now I'm not listen I'm not being I'm not trying to be condescending to anybody in the room and nothing like that all this happened to all of us it's areas of our mental intelligence that we just we have we just stopped developing that we thought we even did through enough you understand what I'm saying but it should always be growing because again you got a lineage that you're bringing in so even your communication style what have you developed you get to the point where you shut down because you don't feel like you can articulate your thoughts. 
you are you at a point where you talk too much that nothing necessarily ever get to no point you just learn just to just talk 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 and don't have a point to go to you understand what I'm saying? And it creates insecurities. And this is why you're talking, you have to have a marriage shut in, and then somebody just shut down and say, never mind. They see a facial expression that reminds them of facial expressions in school, and they shut down. Because that's an insecurity that you're hitting that you don't know about. See what I'm saying? And this is why you have to encourage each other. No, baby, keep talking. Let me understand what you're saying. Understand what I'm saying. Why? Because we're trying to get better at communication. I'm trying to understand what you're telling me before I respond in every aspect, even in the word. You have to read, if you read the word enough, the word will get in you. And you'll go to deeper depths in the word. It won't be surface. It won't just be reading scriptures. But you'll begin to, the word begin to form in you. And revelation, and it start heightened because there's no greater knowledge than revelation. It heightens every aspect of your mental intelligence. You see what I'm saying? Because some of us wouldn't be nothing without the word, and that's me. I wouldn't be a doggone thing. No, even the revelations, me being able to break stuff down, is because I gave myself to it. Because I know my mental intelligence wasn't developed all the way. Because I turned into a false self. And I didn't think that was important. So I wanted to be that false self. And I, I grew that mental. You see what I'm saying? All right, let's draw a hole there. What's some of the holes of the mental intelligence that some people go to? I see we got anger right there. What else? Who? Frustration, sadness, silence, over, that's a great one. Who said that? Overthinking. Depression. Depression. All of these can be go-tos because they are insecurities. And this is what, this is our bank and they haven't been developed. So we pull from our will. And when we get challenged, Pride, one of the biggest things of mental intelligence is pride. Pride will start showing up. And then pride make you just stand on something stupid. Hallelujah. It do, because everybody be looking at you like, now you know you know that's dumb, right? <laughs> no, no, that's what it is. That's what it is. And you try to tie everything together, and you're looking like, are you okay? You sure? You need, you need a hug. <laughs> because that's what... But but you won't just be honest and just say, you know what, I, I really don't understand. I really wasn't developed in that. Baby, I really need help. But what a show up is your wall. And your wife or your husband going to deal with one of these, and these insecurities going to what? Show up. Y'all following me? Woo, that's a big one. Body. Body, physical. Security. It's major. All of us dealt with this. Especially <laughs> if we was raised over here in this land. Just off rip, you being a black American with coily hair. A nice nose to breathe out of. Full lips. Dark skin. <laughs> body is huge because your body, your, secure, your security, and your physicality is supposed to be developed by who? Yahuwah first. Knowing that we're fearful and wonderfully made. But who is Yahuwah before Yahuwah introduce himself to you? Your parents. This is why it's constant. You have to tell your daughters how beautiful they are, your sons how handsome they are, how, how beautiful and fearfully and wonderfully they're made. You have to go into and help them understand why their hair is cold and the beauty and Yahuwah's thoughts on that so they can accept that it's beauty. Why Yahuwah made their nose, why he made their lips the way he lived. I went over some of this 
and that les- uh, lesson that I did on um, Willie Lynch, the Willie Lynch chip, went into the different shades, why he made our nose the way he made our nose, our lips the way he made our lips, our melanin. They have to know about this stuff. Why? Because it builds their security in their own beauty. Because beauty is in the eye of the what? But if this nation teaches you what to behold and it's not your features, you'll only think that beauty is by their standards. And if that beauty is in all the movies and all the cartoons, your children will learn to reject themselves from a subconscious place. And they do it by design. Yes. How many of y'all seen that? The lesson of the dog, test of the dogs. Y'all ain't seen that. Put it in a group if you haven't. Put that in. And I'll put some of the information that I got on our features and how beautiful they is and, and why they are the way that they are. And, uh, you know, I got it from this one, Nakoti. She might be in some other stuff now, but, boy, she was killing it. And, uh, you know, I taught my family. You know what I'm saying? Because if you're not, if your family don't be, and this is why I tell a lot of y'all daughters how beautiful y'all are, especially even the, the young daughters. Young, young daughters just tell them, come here beautiful, come here beautiful, come hug me beautiful, all of these type things because I'm trying to shake their mentality on how beautiful they are. You understand what I'm saying? In their, in their features, if nobody there to do it, chief going to tell them. You see what I'm saying? Because the world is telling them that they're ugly. So if the body is your physical, have it been secured and it's insecure, then you will give it away. And then what you'll start doing with your body, you'll give it away to anybody that give it value. This is how that young man can come along and tell you the way we express our love to each other is giving of your body. Let's take this relationship to another level. He's the only one that consistently told you you beautiful and you melt and you feel like you owe him something because you didn't hear the first words from your father. So there's a male presence with a male voice that hits you somewhere in your soul that your soul don't know that's not your father. So your soul will long for him And it's really longing for your father because what? Now a man, a young boy that became a replacement. A young woman that became a replacement. This is why in the art we have to tell them how beautiful they are and what their body parts are for. We have to tell them how to take care of their womb and how to take care of even their private areas and value what they, as they get older, what their private areas produce. You understand what I'm saying? Not from no uh, pornographic perspective where you highlighting how big or how wet something is and all that type of stuff, and that's the value they get out of it. Not that it's giving uh, perspective for lineages to come and how to take care. You want to teach them the function of a thing. Because what? We recreating and reshaping outside of this culture. We're in the art. If they don't know the purpose of it, they're going to abuse it. And they will abuse their body because of insecurities. Y'all see that? So this is something that I, I want all of us, man, start today. Telling your children, telling your sons, you know, they handsome, boy, you strong, boy, you look through, boy, you this, this, and that, building them up. Hallelujah. And helping them understand, helping your daughters understand the value of their virginity. Have talks to them about their virginity and how important it is to give that to your husband, to give that to your wife. A young man and a young woman in a right culture that ha- that is that 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 is esteemed. They'll know that they can't give somebody their body. They'll know how precious and how sacred their body is and how precious and how sacred sex is and how pornography and anything like that is a, uh, a dagger and an enemy against the progress of what Yahuwah is doing in us. 
but you have to teach it. And you have to teach that to your children yourself. You can't just depend on the art. Hallelujah. Anybody want to say anything about that? Go ahead and put a mark there. Especially if you in a you 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 in a relationship and 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 and, and that's why we we I'm so glad we doing what we doing. Because man, y'all, if we would have knew some of what we're talking about. Yes. You've been in high school and getting and 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 loving somebody. And you don't even know what love is, and you don't open yourself to something you can't you can't control. And that thing come in, and I'm talking about it just take over your being. And you sitting in class with a straight-A student, and now because of some boy, then talk to some other girl because he's been watching and learning how to regulate their body based off the culture. Now you mad and all your grades going down. Because now you done gave your virginity to somebody else, and then next week he with somebody else. And now he's marking you. You need to understand Yeah, I probably need to say that to another time. Yeah, we're going to talk about that, though. Well, no, I talk about that in some of y'all private meetings about how important that is when a, when a man releases his spirit in you and how a woman receives that and what happens emotionally to her. You see what I'm saying? You open yourself up for that too young, that thing can destroy you for the rest of your life. And then you'll replace all kind of darkness with that, and you'll pull from that insecurity rather than be it being secured first in the right family dynamic. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Ma. Um, so also, I know Hadar had spoke on this, um, um, being careful of the, um, of all the, um, the niceties from the same sex. Ooh, oh, yeah, you got yeah, big yeah, muscles, yeah, yeah, or yeah, you yeah. got this outside of us. Yes. You know, that can be twisted. So being careful with that, the perversion. Man, I hope y'all heard that, young people, because y'all remember now it's, it's, it's way worse in their day than ours. And it's so easy now to be open to lesbianism, so easy to be open to homosexuality. Remember, when we was young boys, people was barely coming out the closet. Now everybody just and everybody trying to make room for everybody in the closet now because the closet became the open. Yeah. Say we out here. Everybody need to come in here, for real. And then they would be questioning their sexuality, wanting to be, especially. Listen, man, that body part is so important. If you have a daughter, you have a son, they don't think they're beautiful, and maybe they might have big, uh, especially if it's a daughter, she might have big lips or. Uh, big whatever, and she and then boys don't make her feel attractive, and she got see the popular girls at school and the way that they shaped and all of that, and you don't never come tell her she beautiful and show her how beautiful she is, and tell her the importance of a man receiving her one day, and then she think well my own a lot of them done this my only beauty is to be a man. Then I would get attention from girls. Because on the lesbian side, it really don't matter how the woman look, long as she being like a man. That's the truth, y'all. And they feel like, listen, that's acceptable then, so I'll just be, i just start making my demeanor like that, and i start pulling all the girls. Now, and I'm only doing that to get attention because nobody secured my physicality. So now I'm a lesbian. I'm a homosexual based off insecurity. Same thing with a young boy. I only was raised by his mother. His mother smothered him. He's learning his mother's mannerism without really knowing he's learning it. Because that's all he sees. Because whatever you continuously what? And continuously you become. So he's looking at how when mama get mad, mama roll her neck. How mama sit on the couch. How mama talk to him. How, how, how to hold his hands, how to walk, all of it for real. Now, we laughing, but this stuff is true because that's the dominant presence. Unless he have a bunch of friends and a bunch of dudes, and the dudes be like, hey, bro, you ain't, you ain't walking like that. That's a safe haven, or he has some uncles. But if he's socially awkward and all he have is his mama and maybe his sisters, then he's going to take on that mannerism, and it ain't his fault. And then what he gonna do next? Whatever's more accepted. 
the culture telling me that's accepted. So now I'm going to be all right because now I'm getting friends that's girls because they like me acting like them. And we're going after the same thing. All to be accepted, all because they was never given security about their. So now they replace it with whatever works. That well of what? Insecurity. I can't stress that enough, y'all. Especially, you'll have, <laughs> that's the other thing, you have people that went through bad relationships, uh, uh, bad marriages, and they'll be, they'll put so much emphasis on their, their look. How they feel about how they look and how this, this and that. And it'll, it'll be ringing in their mind, especially if they're a beautiful man, a beautiful woman, and they've been with this old crazy man or crazy woman that then destroy their self-worth, and now they really believe that they're ugly. You ever had some friends that was beautiful, and they really felt like they was ugly and really took anything? You see what I'm saying? Or you married to an old narcissistic dude, and he always talking about your body. Get with your family and be like, yeah, yeah, she over there, she getting fat. She big. She all of that. And then you got to sit there and take that. And then now your conversation is fully about I'm gaining weight, losing weight, gaining weight, losing weight, gaining weight, losing weight. Why? Because somebody told you what to value. I'll be on my daughter's <laughs> talking about they want to be tall. They don't like to be short. I mean, you'll make everything about body. You see what I'm saying? Because that gave you, I'm like, listen, you beautiful the way you are. You don't need to be late. You got tall people wishing they were short. Short people wishing they was tall. You know? And the same thing with us. And I caught Sheo being dark skinned growing up. Man, caught it. <laughs> you know, was the blood, the everybody jokes. Oh, <laughs> these guys, I'll give y'all some of this funny, though. <laughs> This dude used to come when I used to come. He used to come, <laughs> he used to come over there, and he would come over and say, "Here come evening." <laughs> <laughs> that shit was funny though. But we we used to go because at first, I really wasn't no Java like that, so I ain't really know how to come back. And uh, you know, my sister did a lot of um, jumping in there and getting on folks. Me and then I kind of. Starts like, uh-uh, man, I'm finna, finna come at y'all here. But really, like, I remember, boy, I, I, I went home from school one day, and I cried and cried and cried myself to sleep. I mean, boy, that was getting on me on the, uh, the bus stop and at the, at, the, at the school. And I'm talking about, and I was saying, why am I dark? I hate my skin. I hate that I'm dark. And I'm just, I'm just crying. You know what I'm saying? Just in there, just hating it. I done had the one where they said, smile so we can see you. <laughs> Yeah. Dog, e, where you at? Right. <laughs> Been there, man. Right, and that's why, like, I don't let none of that be done around here. We don't get on each other about complexion or none of that because you don't know how deep that goes with people. You don't know who go home crying based off a joke. So that's why, like, even in my house, ain't nobody getting on each other by skin color. Y'all can't get on each other by how y'all look because all y'all look alike. You know what I'm saying? So that's why we, we got to be on top of that. Same thing with uh, dark skinned people. Light skinned people went through it too. Because they, listen, they had, they getting on this side saying you ain't all the way black. And then on this side, you ain't white neither. So they just like, they don't know where to go. Right. And then they got that, they get messed up. People going around calling them mutt. They go mutt puppy over there. For real now. I done heard it. It's like, ooh, don't say that to them. Yeah, just throw a whole bunch of nations in a bag and you come out. Shake them up, roll you out like a dice. What is this, manna? I'm just playing. I'm just playing. But, but, but um, this now, y'all, I, listen. This stuff lives with people. You see what I'm saying? This is why I like, especially two things. Me dark skin in my head, boy. I caught it by my head, boy. Woo, boy. <laughs> it took me a while to some pushing. Go into that joke a little bit. A little bit now. But I'm telling you, but like I had to really, 
replace it, and then you never know who you who got you, got destined for you and their preferences. And I'm sitting there crying about me and being dark skinned, not knowing that Yahuwah was building a woman to me that was attracted to my dark skinness. Right. Now, if I would have messed around and been Michael Jackson, <laughs> right. and turned myself light skinned, I wouldn't be married to this beautiful woman that's, right. that's connected to my destiny. Right. Like, for real. <laughs> that's why he talks about envy so bad. Right. Right. Because we don't know the amount of path that it leads you to. Because really all that is birthed out of envy. Yes. Like yes. I wanna be like you. Right. To the point that I'll change my appearance to look like Man. you. I'll I'll def I will def I'll relinquish myself to right. be you. Right. Right. But I go back to this I can't stress how much this has to be developed. Won't no man I get my daughter to be able to tell her she ain't beautiful. Be able to talk any kind of way to her. Because they, they well confident in what they look like and who they are. And I'm joking, boy, they can get on you too. They ain't learned how to fight yet. I got to help them with that. <laughs> I'm going to them that. But, but I, I, I stress it to them. You know what I'm saying? So this is, in, this is like, y'all, we got to make sure that we own this right here. Hallelujah. Yes, ma'am. Even on the other side, um, building a pride into lighter skin. You know, the lighter skin having more of a pride, and, and you don't want, you, you're scared of the sun, running away from the vitamin D, because you don't want your skin to get dark. Shame, shame. Be loosed from that in Yahusha's name. <laughs> But all that it goes back to insecurities, y'all. All that it goes back to insecurities, right? So this is why you got to love who you are and how you who have made us. Every shade of brown is beautiful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we had to do that whether you big, whether you tall. If you're a big girl, you still beautiful. If you're a small, skinny, skinny, because some, some women hate that they so skinny and they got talked about being so bony and so skinny because the women that's on the music videos, the black women, they got the big hips and the big boobs. You see what I'm saying? So, huh? Listen, all of it ain't now. All of it ain't now. Y'all got to be honest. When you who have made our women, all of them ain't artificial. Some of them just can't hip it. But it's the truth, though. But what I'm saying is, if we sit there and then we destroying our wife's self-esteem looking at pornography, and now it's reiterating in her, her childhood oppression that she's not built enough to hold a man's attention. You reinforcing that. You see that? Hallelujah. So it's all kind of stuff. Because you'll go in and go after the big old hip woman and the big old press woman and she be hell. <laughs> Only th think about her when she get up and leave. The <laughs> rest of her is hell. <laughs> That's it. And you don't even want to see that no more. You don't see that no more. You just want her to wear a dog on sheet all day. Because I want to stay mad at you. But you're crazy. Same thing with a man. You be looking at all them muscles and them green eyes and yellow with a whole bunch of like Shamar Moore and all that type of stuff. And beauty, all that type. You like that. You know what I'm saying? And you looking at all this stuff on TV and you go and look at your man and he ain't built like that. You know what I'm talking about? He felt like that. He got it. <laughs> used to be muscles. <laughs> you better love them used to be muscles. You'll never get that man on TV, okay? You got me. <laughs> Everybody need to embrace everything about yourself. When I embraced my dark skinness and all of that, boy, I thought I was, and then I went way to the other side. Then I was like, oh, snap, listen. Listen, you ain't real. You ain't a real black man unless you dark skinned. We from the continent. 
It's real man. It's strength right here, girl. Come grab Africa. <laughs> come on to the mother. Grab Africa now. Come here, girl. Come grab it. <laughs> Let me see if I'm behind up. Okay. <laughs> Hurry up. Get up here. <laughs> Come on, back. Said the wrong thing. Come back. Right. Home. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, but you can go way left with it. So it's just like you gotta be a balance. I just wanted to throw this perspective in there too. <laughs> because it's important to build a healthy bodily confidence as well. Because I'm gonna tell you what happened to me. I could sing, I used to dance. My mama kept me dressed up. When I lost my tooth, because I don't have a gap, I lost my front tooth. And it used to be way bigger than this. It was, way, it was way bigger than this. I ain't mean that like that. <laughs> I didn't, no, no, no. Son, I ain't mean that like I that. I know. No, I, Look. I didn't. Sit down, man. I did not mean that like that. No, I'm I'm healed, y'all. I'm healed. I, look, no, I'm healed. No, seriously. But look, as a child, when that first happened, man, for like three, four years until I don't know, about three, four years, that thing, I hated it. Like I hated myself. I used to try to talk. My mama tried to give me the little little pop in too. Right. I would. I sat at the table one time and I was talking with some people. I was laughing and that mug flew out. I got up and I just walked out the out the cafeteria. They tried to play it. I was like, they ain't see it, but it was still in my cafeteria plate. <laughs> it was in my lunch tray. And then they started doing. I did. I got like like eight or nine surgeries up on it. So they could. They was trying to get it to where they could do the little the little implant thing. But my 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 tooth had got cracked to the root. So while they was doing the surgeries up on my mouth, it's just looking wounded. So I would, if I look up, it'll be like a hole right there from them drilling it and stuff like that. And so all I'm saying is I, I was confident as a young man. Like the confidence I'm at now is more than where I'm at then, but it's healthy. Back then I was confident in myself and what I looked like. But when something came and altered what I looked like and I didn't look like what I was confident in, it caused me to go worse than what I thought I ever could be. So all I'm saying is developing a healthy confidence in your body and not if you work out, that you confident because you got muscles, but when the muscles leave, you're not confident in yourself. That's an unhealthy confidence. But developing a confidence where it's like, regardless, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. You know what I'm saying? So hallelujah. Oh, that's it. That's why your relationship can't be built on how you look too, man. Because listen, you a young you going to look, listen, going to look through the wife and the husband. When you get older, man, he just, you know, you know, he ain't going to, everything, you know, it, you know, they don't, they don't sit the same way. And you got to, you got to know it's more about, hey, I love you. I love your spirit and your soul more than your body. You understand what I'm saying? So that's important. So this is a, that's a third one. All right, so the next one is we're going to run faster. Social. Social. Social, that is very important. That go back to the family one also too, because that has to be developed from a family dynamic. This right here can cause so many issues of where people, all right, let me say it like this. Nobody naturally desire to be alone. We was never built like that. We wasn't. Yahuwah didn't create you to be a loner. Now, we say I'm a natural loner for the sake of really just hiding our insecurities, but we really just socially awkward. We never learn how to develop our social skills with people. So it's better to be around people for a little bit than find a place to not be social. And they ain't got nothing to do with... Um, extrovert or uh, uh, introvert, either one of them, no, that's just your insecurities. You see what I'm saying? Now, 
Sometimes with an introvert, man, listen, sometimes they need to be alone. They didn't had enough. And there ain't nothing wrong with that. But when you not putting in no work, you not liking to be around people, especially if you get married to an extrovert and you won't don't make them become like you. That's a problem. They love people. They love to be around people and you like to be somewhere to find a corner to sit in. Close to the door so you can end up leaving. That's a problem. That's a problem. That's because you have social insecurities and you live in a fantasy world where you belong, you learn how to belong in that family world. Hallelujah. Some of that uh, Hadar going to talk about this weekend, but that, that's huge because that can be developed any kind of way through movies where you become a certain movie that you're watching, your, 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 your uh, what you call them people, to infinity and beyond, Toy Story, Star Trek, what I was trying to say. Star Trek, and you really think you uh, missed the spark, and you really become one with it. You ain't developing your social skills. I don't know what his name was. Yeah, or, or, or the stories, soap operas. You get so involved and hooked up with them, it's like you calling them on a first-name basis like you know them, and that's your way of escape. <laughs> it's true. It's the truth. All right, so that's that's important. That has to be developed, right? But the social, you can go there. The social uh, security is really developed by the cultural, cultural, cultural. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, 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 no. Make that one of these. Yeah. Cultural security. What is that? A tribe. Everybody desired to, we was built to be in a culture. We was built to be in a way. This is why people that were stripped with every, from everything still seeks a way to develop a culture. This is why we still follow gangs. This is why we try to be in uh, sororities. This is why we try to be in fraternities. This is why we try to be in uh, masons. We try to do all these things to develop the cultural uh, security and really in the culture security is where all this stuff is developed because the culture will show you what the family value the culture will show you what the emotional intelligence is the culture will show you the mental intelligence you see what I'm saying like I wouldn't need a pair of Jordans to give me value because my culture tells me that sapphire is more valuable than buying 200 and some dollar Jordans my culture tells me that um, has meaning behind clothing and articles that gives me value that my self-worth is in the culture and not the culture. So, but if I have no culture, then whatever culture that's going to raise me, going to raise me, whether that's gang culture, gaming culture, uh prostitution culture, church culture, because I think about all all denominations are as culture. All church is lack of ancient culture. We coming together now we saying we coach it. Church of our church of our church of God in Christ. We are uh, uh church of our cool J C Church of our Lord Jesus Christ. We Baptists. We uh P A W Pentecostal. All these type of things that we say we are, and then every few years, there's a new one come up. So you have all those things, the Baptists, then the Pentecostals, then the, uh, uh, no, then, then you have the word of faith people say, we ain't none of that, we word of faith, prosperity. And then this whole new culture called non-denomination come up, we ain't none of them, but we all of them. <laughs> yeah, that's all it is. We all of them. No, the nominee, we just see what we're going to pull out of that. Nope, we ain't going to do that. Mm -mm. Nope, not going to do that. Nope, not going to do that. We didn't came out from the denominations <laughs> to be a non-denomination, which is still a denomination, which is nothing more than a. So when your cultural values is not given, then you insecure, so you fill it with whatever makes you belong. 
This is what we, I'm telling you, this is what we, this is what we building. Last thing, faith base. Knowing your deity or allure according to your ancestors, according to your bloodline. Because we didn't, we don't know that, we replace it with anything. And because the family dynamic didn't introduce us right to what our allure is and what the faith is, <coughs> this is why <coughs> we fight the true faith. If we never learn authority here, we'll never learn authority here. If we never learn obedience here, we'll never hurt learn obedience here. If we never learn devotion here, we'll never learn devotion here. And then we'll go from faith to faith, and then we'll try to start figuring out whatever's best for me. And then you really become the God of yourself and the God that you're serving. But now we're going to secure all of this and it's going to redeem the bloodline and produce productive citizens in the eternal excellence. Can you imagine our children being secured in the eternal excellency, knowing who their allure is and the history of their allure and uh, from the time that their allure established them until now? Can you imagine that? Can you imagine net being the basis of family? Where they understand the family is secure, the father's there, the mother's there, the family's there, they know how to relate to each other the right way, and now the culture can be built to influence the family. Right? And then from that, the culture influenced the emotional intelligence and also influenced the mental intelligence. Now I, I emotions is regulated the right way. We have no shame, we have no guilt, we have no uh, things that we have to grow up with that was done to us now that can ruin our emotional intelligence and that can ruin our mental intelligence. Now we stand as a barrier or a dam as ascended descendants to make sure it don't go beyond us. You got to be willing to be that sacrifice. Just like Musha, if I don't make it, they will. You see what I'm saying? And then what I learned culturally, family, emotionally, mentally, uh, faith-based, where, where the culturally also will influence my body because my body will only be used to express the values of the culture and the values of a lure that runs the culture. That's how I know my body won't be my own. So my body was given what to do three generations before me. That's how long the ark, we got three generations I think we got three generations in here, or close to it, right? That they'll know what to do with their body three generations after them because it's already been given to them. You see what I'm saying? So they ain't got to worry about all that hurt and shame and not liking how they look and for going against each other and all this type of stuff. And all of these things will be stable because it'll be built off the security of the allure that created all of these things. So this is the model that you really need to go within yourself and start working on. Not just the false self, but when I get rid of the false self, let me go visit my insecurities. Because my insecurities is running my life. And a lot of times I heard this quote. I wrote it down. Let me make sure I got it right. Stop allowing your own insecurities to color the way you interpret someone else's intention. Stop allowing your own insecurities to interpret someone else's intentions. Yeah, that is, because a lot of times you see through your own eyes. So you always think somebody <laughs> attention is just as impure as yours. So you make decisions based off your own impurities and how you deal with it. You think their intentions is like yours. And the sad part is to be the third one and think <laughs> your husband, your wife, your friend intentions is like yours and they showing you they hell. <laughs> anyway. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Praise you, Usha. So I hope this can help you. I hope you can use this in what you're doing. Hallelujah. And the building itself. Hallelujah. And we might we might get down some more on it. We just have to see. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you get a picture of this and then I think they got it recorded. Yes, sir. You fin say it again? Oh, praise your husha. Praise your husha. Yeah, if anybody want the picture, because I don't know if it's gonna show up on the camera well. It's showing up. Praise your husha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Any other questions, comments, concerns? What time is it? 8.30. Praise you. Questions, comments, concerns? Right, right, right. You're taking away every excuse, y'all. This is, this, this is, this ain't nothing but a little work. And a made up mind to change. Look at your babies and say, I'll do it for them. You know what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Praise you. Please get this emotional regulation this is important to learn and understand and we'll be fine we'll be fine once we get these things and the principles of it take away every excuse please don't let me have you in a council session three months later and it's about this work on it practice in your times <laughs> of hard confrontation practice it let, let your gauge let you know how, I mean, let your emotions let you know how mature you are. Because they'll show you. You immature. Feelings still get hurt by everything, tissue paper feelings. Nobody can tell you nothing about yourself without you retaliating. Emotionally stupid. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Praise Yahushua. Hold on. Sir, sir, oh. I had to um, do it like soon as you was teaching it, right? Because I know I like I hear to be like, okay, cool, and then I get busy and don't do it. Right. I did it, man. I was um, Yahuwah kept waking me up early in the morning, mm. like Sunday morning he woke me up, Monday and I think Tuesday, and I would get up and I would, you know, he, he was like, nah, don't get up, man, get off your knees, just just write, and then he had me writing. And I just start writing stuff and writing stuff. And then it's like it all start coming out. He start showing it to me. Wow. So now with this, it picked right up where he left me off. Man. It picked right up. Wow. So hallelujah for this. I Man, just praise to say Yahushua. That journaling real. It, it hallelujah. Helped. Hallelujah. Man, let's do that now. Get your journal. Get the journaling. Hallelujah. That's important. Ain't nothing but scribing your own little life. Hallelujah. All right. Praise you. That's everything. We got it. All right, we're going to behold him. Hallelujah. Y'all give Zion a hand for. So I want to. Can she erase it? I tell you, leave it up there. I'm going to take it home. I might got to look back at it one day. <laughs> so them children can walk by and see all this. <laughs> you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise you, Husha. Rebirth of a nation, Hebrew kingdom building.